and, and initiating sprouting. The seeds can be sold in warm water for about one week uh, before they are placed in charcoal in trays for germination. That is, uh, the charcoals, you, you, the seeds are placed in warm water. That is, you replace the warm water for seven days. You just make sure that they're inside warm water. And then uh, all the seed is dried and stored, uh, and stored, that is, which is a dry its germination. The latter, the, lat the latter method reduces the time taken to germinate and increases the germination percentage. The germinated seeds are then raised in nursery, similar to that described for cocoa. That is, uh, the nursery process is very similar to that of cocoa. But bigger polythene bags are used. The seedlings are nursed for 12 to 15 months. This is on like 5 to 6 months for cocoa. But here, you nurse it for 12 to 15 months before they are transplanted to the field. Now, when the spacing on the field, the spacing on, on the field while transplanting is 9 meter triangular. That is, uh, you make uh, like a, a triangular spacing of uh, 9 meter. And then, what are the maintenance practices? At the early stages, the seedlings are intercropped with food crops like plantain, maize, or cassava. And then the weeding process uh, involved is also carried out regularly on the field to prevent weed competition. Herbicide are also used in controlling the weeds. Then fertilizer application. Compound fertilizer of potassium and magnesium can be applied to promote uh, good establishment. Then what's the maturity period of oil palm? Oil palm will start to bear fruits as from the third to fourth year after transplanting, but uh, will attain full production uh, from the 10th year. That is, uh, the production will start improving, but it will get to optimum production uh, when it's uh, 10 years. Then, how is our oil pan being harvested? Harvesting is usually done manually using sharp machets. Uh, using sharp machets. Harvesting of ripe bunches is done when the fruits are red or dark red in color. And how do we process uh, the oil palm, uh, oil palm fruits? After harvesting, the bunches are transferred to the processing point. The first step is the stripping of the palm fruit from the bunches, uh, which is followed by cleaning and boiling to soften and release the oil contained in the mesocarp. The oil is extracted uh, by both the traditional and then the modern method. The tr traditional method, which uh, is laborious and not efficient, involves the pounding of the boiled fruit in special mortars, and then you, after that, you add water, the addition of water to, to the content, followed by a thorough mixing and then the separation of the oil from the residue. The kernel, which is a byproduct, is separated from the fiber by washing. The oil recovery while using the traditional method is between 60 to, 60, uh, to 65 percent. Now for the modern method, the modern method makes use of the digester to remove the softened, uh, to remove oil from the softened boiled and macerated uh, fruits, which is later transferred to the screw press to extract the oil. That is, in the modern method, uh, there is a digester that actually uh, removes the pulp, that is, remove the mesocarp from the kernel, uh, and after it's as the mesocarp has been macerated, uh, has been uh, digested, it is now being transferred to the screw press to extract the oil from the fiber and the kernel. The oil is then heated and reheated re gently to remove traces of water. The oil recovery of this uh, improved modern method is between 80 and 90 percent. That is, it is more efficient, efficient than the traditional method. Then how is oil extracted from the oil pan being stored? Oil is stored in aluminum or plastic containers or drums. That is, uh, we, uh, you can't just use an um, ordinary steel container because it can contaminate it. You use aluminum, uh, which, doesn't, which does not react with food, substances, and then plastic containers. Then what's uh, the utilization of oil pan? That is, uh, the use of oil pan. The oil palm tree is very useful. It's a very useful crop. Almost all the parts, even the fronts, uh, almost all the parts is useful. 
just like the, the front, the leaves, the trunk, and the roots are used for thing, for one thing or the other. The palm oil is used for cooking, uh, that is the domestic use. Uh, the palm oil is also used industrially for the manufacture of margarine and soap. And uh, then the palm kernel seed obtained on cracking. Uh, on, on obtaining or on cracking the nut is processed uh, and oil is uh, uh, being removed. And uh, after the oil is being removed, uh, the cake is being used, which is a byproduct of the extrusion of oil from the kernel, is a component of livestock feed. Uh, without we come to the, the hand of palm oil, now we'll be looking at pasture and forage crops. What is pasture? Pasture is a piece of land on which forage crops or a mixture of grasses and legumes grows and is also managed for the purpose of feeding animals. While forage crops are grasses and legumes grown or cultivated for, for their vegetative part for the purpose of feeding livestock. The forage are plants while the pasture is a piece of land on which forage crop grows. Then what is uh, what are the uses of forage crops? Uh, well, the first use is that uh, it's a source of livestock feed. Forage crops are used for feeding livestock like horses, cow, goats, sheep, cattle, and so on. Uh, forage crops are also used as cover crops. Most forage crops, especially the leguminous plants, serve as cover crops which add nutrients to the soil and control weed growth and also reduce potential energy of uh, raindrops and also conserve the moisture in the soil. And then uh, the third uh, uses of forage crop is, that, is the prevention of erosion. Forage crops help to prevent water and mid erosion. The roots of forage crops helps in holding the soil particles together. And once it is all together, uh, the wind can't just remove, get it removed because they are not losing, they are being pulled together. And then, uh, forage crops are used in the conservation of soil moisture. When forage crops form cover crop, they prevent direct evaporation from the soil, thereby conserving the soil moisture. Uh, soil crop is also used as green manure. Uh, forage crops could be sludged and plowed into the soil. When forage crops are sludged and plowed into the soil as green manure, they increase the fertility of the soil. Forage crops could be used as bedding material for animals. That is, uh, you can use as bedding materials for animals. And uh, forage crops like guinea grass and elephant grass can be used for roofing or farm stead. Then, what are types of pasture? There are two main types of pasture, namely the natural pasture and then we have the artificial pasture. The natural pastures are pastures where grasses and legumes grow on their own. That is, it is a pasture that is not planted by man and are fed upon by animals. That is, uh, natural pastures are pastures where grasses and legumes grow on their own and, and are fed onto animals. Or you can define it as uh, as pastures not being planted by man and are fed upon by animals. This is also known as natural grass land. What are the characteristics of natural pasture? It contains poor quality of grasses and uh, legumes. It also contains varieties of grasses and legumes, some of which may not be eaten by the livestock uh, because since it's, uh, it is not purposefully cultivated, it's, it's just grow the legumes uh, the forage crops grows on their own. Uh, you might have uh, those that are not, will not be eaten by the livestock. Then it has good generative ability. It usually contains some grasses and legumes which cannot be easily eradicated. Uh, it can also withstand trampling by farm animals. Then new growth is stimulated by body. Uh, now for artificial pasture. Artificial pasture are pastures where grasses and legumes are then deliberately planted, established, and managed by man. This is quite different from the natural pasture where plants grow on their own and it is not uh, planted, established, or managed by man. This is also known as improved, times, or sown, or established pasture. Now, what are the characteristics of artificial pasture? It contains high quality grasses and legumes. Selected grasses and legumes are grown in adequate proportion, that is, uh, here we don't have uh, 
other, any other form of plant is like weed. Here they, we have selected grasses, it doesn't contain uh, grasses that is not being selected, and then it doesn't contain legumes that are not planted. Uh, so what we will be having in uh, artificial pasture is that it will have selected grasses and legumes in adequate proportion. It also has high regenerative ability after being fed upon by animals. It can withstand trampling by farm animals. Then it is properly managed for high productivity of forest crops. E.g., that is uh, the management. There, is, there are management practices in uh, artificial pasture, uh, like uh, fertilization, application of fertilizer, irrigation. That, that is the artificial uh, application of water. Then we have the rotational. Uh, grazing. You know, factors, what are the factors affecting uh, productivity and distribution of pasture? That is, factors affecting pasture productivity and distribution. The production and distribution depend on the following factors. One, the soil fertility. Uh, the first one is the soil fertility. Low or no fertile soil affects the production and distribution of pasture. This can be improved by the application of manure or fertilizer. The next factor is uh, that affects uh, productivity and distribution of pasture is rainfall. In areas of low rainfall or during dry season, irrigation can be used to supply water. That is, rainfall, if there is no adequate water in the soil, uh, the distribution and production of pasture will be low, and this can be corrected uh, by irrigation. 